So our next topic is to how to calculate the periodic payment for uh, the different types of annuities we've been dealing with. So we should be recognizing that when we have the future value or of an annuity or an annuity due, that typically what we've known before is the payment, the periodic rate, and the end, the number of compounding periods or number of payment periods. We can actually now switch this around so that we don't know what the payment is, but we do know what the future value is. So all we need to do is plug in our information for the future value, whether it's ordinary or due, plug in our periodic rate and our number of compounding periods, and calculate these values here and here, and then just divide each side of the equation by those big terms to isolate for the payment. One of the things we will have to keep track of though is we'll have to be able to identify do we have either the future value or the present value in a particular situation. So for this example, Tyler paid a certain amount of money every quarter. We don't know how much that was, but he was saving $50,000 in 15 years. We need to know in this particular scenario, is that $50,000 a future value or a present value? So it's actually a future value because it's an accumulated value or it is a savings. So let's go ahead now and solve the problem. So identifying the type of annuity, we can see that the payments are made at the end of each period or quarterly. And the compounding period is semi-annual, 10% semi-annually, which is not equal to the quarterly payment period. So we have an ordinary general annuity. And we should recall that that does require an extra step calculation. Our timeline then is that we have the ordinary annuity, payments are at the end of the period, our J2, our semi-annual interest rate, the nominal rate is 10% and our future value is 50,000, and we have 15 years. We decide to figure out our periodic rate. Now we do recognize it's a general case that the payment per quarter doesn't match the compounding period semi-annually, so we're going to need a quarterly periodic rate. We can figure out the number of quarterly payments, just 15 years times four quarterly payments per year, four times 15 is 60 quarterly payments. Let's sort out the equivalent interest rate. So again, we need the quarterly rate as opposed to the semi-annual rate. So using our equivalent interest formula, we have one plus the given rate, 10% over two, because it's semi-annual raised to the 2 over 4. We do our calculation and we get 0 0.02469 with all the decimals per quarter. We can now substitute all our values into our future value of an ordinary annuity formula. So the future value 50,000 is equal to our unknown payment times, and here's our periodic rate, the 02469 with all the decimals. And again, the 02469 with all the decimals. There's our 60 quarterly payments. Now let's go ahead and do the calculations. So there's the future value again formula with the numbers put in. Here we have in the next line, this value, all these numbers in here, that calculation represents 134518, again with all the decimals. Isolating for our payment, we divide each side by the 134 to get our final answer that the payment rounded to two decimal places is $371.70. Now, for those of you who wanna use your Texas BA2 Plus calculator, if you have it, please remember that we do have two different types of annuities. This is an ordinary general annuity. So for ordinary annuities, our calculators have to be set to the end. And remember, how do we get to that? We have our calculators on, we hit second function, the BGN button. If we're not seeing end there, we hit the second and the enter button. Once we see end, we can just clear our screen and go ahead. Plugging in all our numbers, our N is 60, interest nominal rate is 10, payments per year are four for quarterly, compoundings per year are two for semi-annual, present value is zero, Payment is unknown and our given future value is 50,000. Plugging all those in and 
hitting the CPT or compute button for payment. We get our payment 371696 with all the decimals and again rounded to two decimal places or rounded to the nearest cent 371 and 70. Now we can do the same type of thing using our present value formulas. So again, with the present value ordinary or present value due, if we know those values and we don't know the payments, then again, we can just plug in all the information that we do know, the present value, the periodic rate, and the number of compounding periods or payment periods, and we can rearrange again for our unknown payment. Here's a scenario where someone obtained an $86,450 factory improvement loan from the bank at a particular interest rate. Once again, we need to be able to determine is that 86,000, is it a future value or a present value? So terminology again, this is gonna be a present value. We've received a loan, so somebody has given us money up front, so we've gotten cash today. Loans are present value. Let's go ahead and solve the problem. So we'll have to identify the type of annuity now. Now we do have uh, payments that are going to be done at the month end. So end of payments is going to be ordinary and the compounding period is 15% monthly. Payment periods are monthly. So what kind of annuity do we have? We have an ordinary simple annuity. Setting up our timeline, here's our payments at the end of the month. We don't know what that payment is per month. We do have our monthly nominal rate given and we have our term of 12 years. We need to bring that series of payments back to today because we received the loan of 86,450. Because we have a simple case for the annuity, we can just take our nominal rate of 15% and divide it by 12 to get 0125 per month as our periodic interest rate number of payment periods, we're doing this for 12 years, and we have 12 payments per year, so a total of 144 monthly payments. Remembering our present value of an ordinary annuity formula, as you can see here, remember we have the negative exponent because we're bringing the money back. Plugging in our values, there's our 86,450, there's our periodic rate, and there's our negative 144 for the number of monthly payments. Calculating everything that's in the brackets here, we should get 66,6277 with all the rest of the decimals. Isolating for payment, divide each side by that 66.6277. We get the 1297,5079 with all the decimals. And rounding, we get $1,297.51 would be the required month end payments to pay off the loan in 12 years. Again, if you want to use your Texas BA2 plus calculator, make sure that we do have the calculator set to end because we have month end payments. Figure out our N. Our N is the 144, 12 years, 12 months, 144. Interest is 15%. Payments per year, we have monthly payments. Compoundings per year, we have monthly compounding. Present value is the 86,450. Payment is the unknown. That's what we'll use to uh, our CPT button to compute it. But we have to enter our future value first, put in zero, and then go hit the CPT for the payment. And again, you'll get the same answer. Let's take a look at this example. After winning a lottery, 10,000. And $300 was deposited into an account, earning an interest at 3% compounded annually. We want to know how much, what's our largest withdrawal that we could take out at the beginning of each month from this account for the next eight years. Now, you can try this question on your own. So you could pause the video right now and try it out. If you've tried it out, you should have gotten 120 and 33 cents to work through the problem. Let's take a look. Same as before, the payments are at the beginning of each payment period. So there's going to be beginning, that's going to be an annuity due. We have annual compounding, 3% compounded annually, and we have monthly payments. So we see we have the monthly payments. Because of that, 
we have a general annuity due. Okay, so due because of beginning, general because these don't match. And again, remind yourself that requires an extra step. Here's our timeline showing our payments at the beginning. We don't want, we want to know what our monthly payment is. So there's our unknown. There's our nominal rate. J1 is 3% and our term is eight years. We need to bring all these payments back to today because they're all equal to 10,300. That is what we actually won and put into the bank today. Because we have monthly payments, we need to be able to calculate a monthly periodic rate. We don't know it because we have a annual rate given. And our number of monthly payments is just the term eight years times 12 payments per year, 96 payments. So our extra step here to calculate our equivalent monthly rate is one plus the given nominal rate, O3, divided by the number of compounding periods, one, raised to the 1 12th, calculate all this and subtract one, and you'll get double naught 246 with all the decimals per month. We then have to put this into our present value of annuity due formula. Remember with the annuity due formula, we do have this extra term, one plus I, plugging our values in. Now what we can do is calculate all this on the right hand side and then further our calculations. Just picking up so we have more space here. So this is where we're now going to calculate what all this is equal to on this side. So we wind up getting that the 10,300 is equal to our unknown payment times 85.8959 with all the decimals. Doing our rearranging, we can calculate our payment and our payment comes out to 120.3285 with all its decimals and rounded to the nearest cent, $120.33. Again, taking a look at the same question, but using our Texas BA2 plus calculator, because this is an annuity due, you must set your calculator to the BGN. So again, you'd hit your second payment button. And in doing that, you'd see whether the display shows end or BGN. If it's showing end, you're going to have to hit second and enter to get to BGN. Once you're at BGN, you can just clear your screen and go ahead and start putting in your values. So our number of payments is the 96. Our nominal rate is given as three. Our payments per year, we're making monthly payments, so 12. Our compoundings per year is one because we have annual compounding. Our present value is negative 10, 300. Payment is what we're gonna compute and the future value is zero. Plugging all these values in, you'll get your payment is the 120, 328 with all the decimals and rounding to two decimal places. We get that our largest withdrawal for this scenario is $120.33. So hopefully you can see from this little mini lesson that it's relatively easy to calculate what your payments are, whether you use your Texas BA2 plus calculator TVM functionality or whether you just use regular calculator or possibly Excel.